And they're not blue. Sped Homeschool Conversations. Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, our theme this April is um, homeschool mom burnout, basically, and it was a really good theme for us to pick this month, considering that um, most moms are pretty burnt out right now with all this COVID-19 stuff. So um, anyway, so we hope to encourage you tonight, and I have two very special guests from Home Life Academy. I have um, Margie and Amanda, and they're going to tell us a little bit more about themselves. But we're going to talk about strategies to prevent burnout, and then maybe possibly some ways to get out of burnout if you're already there. <laughs> um, but um, we also want to thank Bookshark for sponsoring this episode, and we'll hear more about um, them and their curriculum about halfway um, through this broadcast. But if you know somebody that um, you think maybe needs to hear what we're talking about tonight, and so why don't you just share this link? Because um, you can share the, the YouTube link, or you can share the Periscope link, or the, the link on Facebook anywhere that um, that people can see that they're all publicly available. So we just thank you for being with us. Also know that you can share um, in your, the comments to be part of the conversation. So um, you can add with your questions, your comments as we go along. So um, anyways, we, um, we just like to get to know you, Margie and Amanda, a little bit more and a little bit about Home Life Academy as we get started and um, we'll kind of start diving into to our topic tonight. And if you know who wants to start. <laughs> All right. Well, my name is Margie and um, I homeschooled for about 30 years. I had six children. We homeschooled about six different states. I didn't have any idea what kind of education I was getting through all of that. So I kind of got closer to the end and we moved to Tennessee and I ended up coming to work for Home Life Academy and realized that lots of days I get to download what took me 30 years to learn and help mothers learn things in a lot shorter span. And right. it's just been a real huge blessing to be able to do that with Home Life Academy. And that's the, the blessing of working with a consultant is that you do, you glean years of, of wisdom from, from somebody. So that's, that's awesome. So well, I'm Amanda. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm still um, in my homeschooling journey. Um, I have uh, two that we've homeschooled and my son graduated last May. And then I have my daughter who is a junior this year. So I am closing in towards the end, and I just came on board with Home Life uh, two years ago. Okay. So it's been a, a, I'm at the beginning of the journey with Home Life, mm -hmm. but uh, it's been, it's been very interesting. I've already learned a lot and happy to share any information that I've gained. Yeah. Well, you've been homeschooling long enough to have some, some yeah. wisdom that you've gained, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> And you're an asset, I'm sure, to Home Life Academy. So can you guys tell us what Home Life Academy does so that parents aren't familiar with them, that they um, can learn a little bit more? Well, Home Life Academy is an umbrella school. It started out here in Tennessee uh, where they uh, can become a legal covering where uh, parents don't have to report to the school district. They can uh, enroll with us and we report them. But we also have a full counseling staff where we help parents go through a lot of the stores, pick out curriculum, mm -hmm. figure out if there's things going on that they just don't know what to do with. Uh, we, right. you know, we cry with them. We pray with them. We do whatever we need mm -hmm. to help families. Uh, we meet all those documents kids, you know, families need, and they do graduate with an official transcript and diploma from our, from home life. So it's, it's just a really neat operation, but it has grown as parents moved out. We are now legal covering in Florida and Alabama and Colorado. And we actually have students in every single state in the United States and internationally. So it has really grown uh, this need uh, for having this kind of support with homeschoolers. Right. And yeah, Every parent needs a different level of support, and we shouldn't feel guilty because we need a level of support, if you know, for the exactly. documenting, for the, you know, just a, 
somebody to, to walk me through this. What are my curriculum options? How do I deal with this? And, um, and so, you know, there, you go everything from the, the parent who wants to do everything on their own and kind of free float through, through the whole process to, I'd like some structure and I'm not the one that's going to set up this structure. <laughs> well, I think that's one thing that makes home life a little bit different than some others is they really do allow that flexibility. Mm -hmm. every, and it's what I love because I was not the typical homeschooler. And so I loved it that they give you that option to figure out how your children learn best and, right. and go with it and i tell parents as we're helping them develop trends you tell me what you're doing and i'll figure out how to put it in a transcript you know uh because parents can do all those different kind of things mm -hmm. and it's really it really gives you that freedom for your child to learn the very and it's definitely with kids with challenges right. it's just best because we get to figure that out and, and walk through that plan with them you know i tell my mother the only thing they're not allowed to do is be anxious because <laughs> That's against the rules. We can do whatever else, but you're just not allowed to be We're going to talk through this. We're going to figure it out. We're going to find the best plan for that kid, that student. Well, and there is one trap that you can fall into that, that leads to burnout is the anxiety. You know, you, you dive into things before you, you even allow the time to process them about why you're doing them. And, and that can lead to burnout really quickly, can it? Yeah, one of the one of the biggest things I find that burns parents out fast is uh, thinking that they're going to replicate public school at home. Uh, you know, they they come home and, and we were public school trained. I was as guilty as anybody else. I came home and you know we did math at eight and English at nine and science at ten and you know we planned that whole day and no day ever came out like that. I mean that was a penalty for it to come out, but. Because I realized at home, we didn't have to do anything like that. We could have, you know, we could do science one day and a little bit of math every morning. And maybe we would do history. And then we did a lot of unit studies at our house. And so we just had a lot more. When we began to really be homeschoolers, it, there wasn't a lot of stress and burnout. It's when we were trying to make fit into that public school model of what it's supposed to look like. We, you know, we thought it was. Right. Yeah, yeah. So Amanda, did you ever experience any burnout because of yes. scheduling and things like that? Yes, like Margie said, either trying to mimic the school or um, with my youngest, there were some learning struggles. Mm -hmm. So, so um, comparing myself and my student to typical learners and um, comparing my worst days to um, someone else's, what they said was their best day. So. Um, yeah. That was a big that was a big part of it yeah to try not to compare and to find other um like-minded moms and um get that support right that's a, that's a huge strategy is that like-mindedness instead of trying to fit someone else's mold and what homeschooling should look like because there are some people who do try to do the homeschool replicated model they're not the, the public right. school replicated model and they somehow have children that that seems to work well with. I don't know how that happens because it, it would have bombed in my house. <laughs> Well, I've kind of found over time that every curriculum, no curriculum works for everybody, but every curriculum works for somebody. Yes. So that's the reason we've mm -hmm. got to figure it out. You've got kids that just thrive, you know, reading and taking tests. But then I remind parents that isn't really where you get the most long term retention of information. You've got to touch it, feel it. And so helping them to find that balance in amongst all of that is really important mm -hmm. and not to get because if. And I think setting those standards, you know, parents, like I think Amanda touched with comparing yourself to somebody else. I had six and none of mine were the same. That's what <laughs> really got me out of the box. I kept saying, oh, Lord, what's coming next? You know, exactly. they just, none of them, I could, they, could they, any of them might be similar. I actually have a whole workshop I do on how children learn best. And it's based on the six very different learning styles of my children. And people will call and I'll say, that's a child number five. I got that. Okay. You know, because <laughs> uh, it's just really, you know, it's, we, and I love it that we don't have to spit into that mold, but, but comparing your children to other people can really cause you to burn out and feel like I'm not doing enough and I got to work harder and I got to, you know, and yeah. if you just relax, yeah. they learn a lot more if you then you can talk. Yeah. It's the removal of that stress. Yeah. So Amanda, do you have anything to, to add to that about different children and how have your two been with 
learning. Oh, night, night and day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just, yeah. Um, I thought I was a great teacher with the older one. Right. And then the second one, I'm like, why can't I teach her the alphabet? Um, so, yeah. Um, but being able to, I, I mean, we did the, the testing route and um, were able to um, get community support. We did you know, speech therapy, things like that. Um, so bringing the professionals on really helped me um, avoid some of the burnout and the encouragement that we were making progress. And um, I think another thing that really helped with uh, avoiding burnout was uh, the year round. We took lots of breaks, but to keep from having to remediate and my daughter to forget all the things we worked so hard to learn, we were really encouraged to only take very brief, you know, couple of week breaks and at least keep the core subjects going. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that kind of. Quite a few parents in our community that do that. And you know, one thing I find that burns parents out is that we've kind of got this mentality that all children are going to be good in every subject, you know. Yeah. And and I and I remember people said, well, I I actually loved math. I was the math geeky kid, and I I loved math. So when I started homeschooling, I kind of became a math tutor. You know, people would bring me their kids, and I was just kind of amazed that they do not bring the kids that love math to the math <laughs> yes. They don't bring you all the kids that don't particularly like math. And what happened was is that it these kids I was it was amazing. They could draw, they could paint, they could dance they could write beautiful essays and books they were writing their own novels you know <laughs> but they couldn't do math you know uh, and so it just helped me to realize that all of us have a gift so i often tell parents mm -hmm. you got to get the focus off of what they're not good at and get to find something they're really good at and then just kind of pull in the other stuff that they need to get through that because they're gifted somewhere you know i mean every kid Yes, Even the ones with challenges, you will find yeah. something that that's their thing. Yes. That is that's really their mentality. Thing. That it's they have to be thing. at the same grade level for every subject. Piggy, you know, I'm having a little hard time ta oh. hearing you, so that may be why if I talk over you, I apologize. Oh, no, that's fine. I unless just, I see your lips moving, I'm yeah. going. <laughs> I was just saying that that public school mentality of every grade level has to be at, you know, every subject has to be at the same grade level. Nope, you're not hearing me. Let me try that. I'm going to check my mic quick here. I'm sorry. Um, one of the things that, you know, that Amanda touched on was getting help. You know, when we started back in the 1980s homeschool, there was no help. We didn't have curriculum, really. We had nothing. Now there is thousands of curriculum options. There is, there's people coming out with, um, you know, um, things to help families, you know, ways to to even help kind of, I don't say cure, but at least improve kids learning. Studying. Remediate. I mean, Amanda, you, you know, you probably know more about that. And I do the things that but there's, I go to these conventions and I see these people that they have really had success working with the brain to help. Have you had some insight into that? Have you used any of that? Well, we did um, like Lauren has dyslexia. So we are, um, we used uh, Orton Gillingham and we did the Barton uh, method. So mm -hmm. the remediation and just being able to concentrate on the core subjects, not getting distracted by trying to do, like you said, mimic school and, and feel like you have to do health and social studies and science every year. Um, and we really targeted those core subjects of reading, writing and arithmetic. Um, especially, I mean, definitely all the elementary years. Um, just trying to to get those skills down and add to the other subjects later. Yeah. yeah, and we probably came at it a little bit opposite. We did unit studies, so we did like mm -hmm. very little bookie work. We did one thing I think that prevented a lot of burnout for us was that we did not do school five days a week. The book work kind of stuff, you know, the oh, yeah. sit down. We did it maybe three to four days a week. And then we always made sure we had something to look forward to on Friday. You know, we made sure that whatever science thing that we were doing, we went on a field trip or we planned all, I wanted all the best one day. Or that's when we got together with other homeschoolers to, you know, to do that messy stuff and to do things together. So they always had something to look forward to. And I think we had something to look forward to, you know, to go yeah. see the other moms. I think, um, you know, when I was the, 
talking to my daughter who's just in the early stages of young children and, and looking at homeschool. And I said, well, what do you think about burnout? And she said, well, if I get tired of it, I just do something new. You know, I have something <laughs> yeah, new to do. Exactly. I change it up. I'm, I don't get stuck in a rut of this is how we do it. I change yeah. it up. And I thought, well, that's really good. And I think that's what unit studies brought to the table. We were always studying something new or doing something different or going on a different kind of field trip. You know, I, I, I don't, I guess kind of nicknamed the field trip queen in the <laughs> Ohio when we lived there 16 years because I was coming up with a field trip. And when I would set it up, it was just as easy to advertise it to the other homeschoolers and say anybody else want to go and of course they'd all show up and then everybody got to see each other and these and the kids built some really good relationships but i think that change up really helped us not feel like we were stuck in a rut um, right right yeah. one thing i just want to mention about burnout a little bit was the fact that some curriculums were actually originally designed for private schools so they're set up with a lot of busy yes. work and a lot of workbooks and a lot of things and you can get that is the number one thing that somebody calls me and they're just frazzled it is right. that yeah. i can almost before i open the screen i kind of know what curriculum they're using because mm -hmm. a curriculum mm -hmm. changing that curriculum can really it may not be that your kid's not even good at that it's just the curriculum is got too much busy work and it's just right. not a good fit. And sometimes um, it's written in a language or in a, um, are you still having a hard time hearing me or? No, it's much better. better. Okay. Thank you. Okay. It's much better. Um, yeah. My, my microphone was kind of wonky before I started, but sometimes mm -hmm. the, just the language used in a curriculum is not what you speak in your home, I've found. And so you read these questions and your kids are like, I don't quite interpret that because that's not how we speak at home. It's no other different words being used or um, the question is just brought from a different angle than you normally, you know, approach things in your house. So, um, yeah, that is so true. Yeah, that it is. So we always, you know, that's one of the big things that people are burning out is to look at that and just see what could I do different? You know, I always tell moms, mm -hmm. if you are not having fun, do something different because learning should be fun. It should yeah. not be pleasure. Okay. I don't learn if I'm miserable. All I can think about is how can I get out of this misery? And I think that's what happens when you burn out. You feel like I'm just miserable. Do I really want to keep doing this? And I think that you need to change it up and make it fun. You know, it doesn't matter how your children learn. It matters that they're learning. Mm -hmm. And just because you go through a workbook and take tests does not mean that your kids are learning. Uh, you know, it means. So I, I actually had read across some research that said that if they get to the point they can tell you what they have learned, not take a test. If they can verbally tell you that their retention of information will go to about 90%. And I'm being an accountant most of my life. I, I'm numbers. I like numbers. Mm -hmm. And I said, if they only read and take tests, they say that the, that the retention of information will be about five to 10%. Yeah. So I like the 90% odds over the five to 10%. Mm -hmm. Give me the, so I was always asking my children, why do you think it works that way? Or if they ask me a why question, I love to say, especially if they got older and they could research mm -hmm. things themselves, I said, I have no idea. That is a great question. Why don't you go research that? And they became, when they got to college, we didn't even like really prepare our kids for college like people mm -hmm. think you need to do. But when they got to college, they were really good at going and finding the answers because they've been doing this their whole life with me going, well, that's great. Go figure that. And then they would come back and tell me what they had learned and then we both learned then they would tell their younger siblings you oh, know yeah. and their younger siblings would learn but then they also are um, just instilling that knowledge into themselves to retain it for a long term so um but it's a lot more fun it's just a lot more fun that way whether it's a game you know one of our favorite websites was shepherd software because it had beat the level games and it has math games and science games and, and amanda probably knows a bunch of great websites too but it made it mm -hmm. fun and all of a sudden they we had a four-year-old that got on there and memorized his states and capitals yeah i'm not even sure he really understood what a state and capital was but he could tell you <laughs> because if you make it fun they can learn they can learn much mm -hmm. better so you're not having fun if, call one of us we'll help you figure out <laughs> Yeah, I do talk a lot with um, parents. At the longer I homeschooled, the more laid back I got and stopped trying to mimic the school system. And I started to feel like I, I wanted to keep in mind that I wanted to finish the long haul. And I didn't want to burn out. Um, 
So those early years now, now that I'm towards the end, I feel like I can encourage moms to um, take it easy. Those first years, like you're saying, Margie, have more fun. Um, yes, learn your arithmetic. Yes, read and write. But um, don't try to mimic the school and burn yourself out. Yeah, I think that they one of your main goals needs to be when you get to the end is that they love to learn. And so if you have done it in a fun way, they, they love to learn. Uh, one of my children told me about a year or so ago, he said, you know, all six of us are so different. And I said, yeah, I get that. And he said, but we are all learning junkies. He said, all of us just love to go. And I thought, well, I think that's probably one of the best compliments I could get. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Life doesn't come with a with an owner's manual. You have got mm -hmm. to keep learning. You, you know, a lot of parents would say, well, how will I know if I teach them everything? And I said, just I'll just tell you, you're not going to teach them everything. <laughs> exactly. But if you teach them to love to learn, they'll learn the rest of their life. So right. let that thirst for If you're not seeing light bulbs coming on and they're going, mm -hmm. Huh? Then you need to do something different. It, right. You need they need to have that excitement for loving to learn, mm -hmm. and uh, it's, it's fun. And then you have fun too. You make more memories. You make more good memories. You know, having gotten to the end, everybody kept thinking, "Oh, you're going to have empty nest." And I thought, "No, honey. When I got to into thirty years, I was tired." I yeah. said, <laughs> "But I had a lot of memories. I have a lot of cool things we did." that I treasure in the years that they're all grown up. And now I'm getting to watch mm -hmm. them go out and do be adults is what I wanted. I want adults when I was finished. <laughs> so we worked at that. Yeah. 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 It's the love of learning. Nancy had shared. She said, my son loves history and geography. And I think that's the most hated in school. I agree. Almost every homeschool mom I've talked to, if they were public schooled or private schooled, history was one of their top ones that they hated. And now they love it. Um, <laughs> He's really not good reading, but it's hard for me to make sure that I was um, giving him what he loves. And, you know, there's so, so many ways to go around the not reading part mm -hmm. to still That's do right. that history and that geography. And, you know, it's just figuring what, what Margie was talking about earlier was that, you know, find out what they're good at and then and you accentuate that and then you kind of help them in those areas that they struggle in. But there's, mm -hmm. there's just so many options now that you can change up well that little website shepherd software one of the first things they developed on that was a geography games and uh it was just amazing so i tell her go check it out it's a free website you just go on there but you know lots of kids love to play games and they love to beat the level you know mm -hmm. and so they put on there and next thing they know they they learned world geography and they didn't really it was kind of just snuck in there you know you know be right. fun we had um, we had a daughter that um, had some learning challenges, and we had realized she was a real auditory learner. She needed to hear everything. Actually, I realized as we went through with her that I'm an auditory learner, that I, I need to hear things. And um, as a child, I used to go in my bedroom, read everything out loud, because we didn't have audio books back then. You know, you had to read <laughs> And, uh, and that's how I retained information. So when she came along, I was like, oh, my gosh, but we have resources now. So we didn't yes. hear kids read the book or they listened to it on an audio book or they watched a movie about the, the book. Uh, whatever it took to get the information in here, that's mm -hmm. what we wanted. And so I think that really sets people free, too, is to realize, oh, read and take it is not the only way to get information inside of you. Right. And we um, use we used my father's world and the read alouds were so important. Um, and especially for my daughter. And then when we were introduced to the audio books, um, ear reading. So Lauren even says now, uh, mom, I do not like to eye read. I want to ear read. Mm -hmm. Um, but realizing that that is just as important and, um, the kids are still learning, even if they're not doing all of the reading themselves. Well, and one thing we just fell upon is, is was a curriculum that that my daughter actually figured this out because she, she could highlight the text on the computer and it would read it out loud. So she was seeing it and hearing right. it at the same time. And she had, she had been one of those very slow, every syllable kind of readers. And just within a year, her reading mm -hmm. speed just increased because we added the audio to the sea in it and it was amazing uh just yeah. that little thing and i know now they probably have even more little things that mm -hmm. you can do but 
it can make a big difference if you change up the game a little bit. Right. Yeah. Nancy made the comment that her son has auditory processing disorder as well as dyslexia. Um, I don't know if you two have run into that, but my middle son has that exact yes. same thing, Nancy. And he, the only thing that worked for him because he needed both the auditory and the visual is to watch movies with captions. He reads those incredibly graphic novels work well for him, but those are the only things he can read without getting tired. And he's 21 now, and that still is the same. Um, it's just a very tiring experience for him because the auditory processing is so difficult as well as the, the visual with the dyslexia that um, yes. to keep all those things together. But it's so neat he's found it. something that works yeah, for but him. Yes, exactly. You just have to keep trying and um, yeah. Talk to people who've been through it, like these ladies, you know, it's <laughs> um, Well, I it's think so one helpful. of the things that triggered me early on to look for something different, because I was an accountant, so I was, people say, I'm not as creative as you guys are. So I, <laughs> I was in that box, buddy. I was in that box. But we lived next door to a gentleman that I, when I would talk to him, I thought, oh my gosh, this man is so smart. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was getting his master's degree. I knew he was getting a master's degree at the same school my husband was going to. And, um, his wife told me, she said, but you, you have to understand, he has never read a book and he has never written his own paper. She said, I wow. he was labeled stupid and uh, special ed and all these different things until his wife realized that if she read him the books, he retained it, you know, or if she, if he dictated mm -hmm. papers, she could write down all this incredible stuff that was in his head. Right. And, and so it really gave an open door to me to realize that, it didn't matter how they learned. It matters that they're learning and right. that people need to put their, what they're um, learning on a different plate. You know, we've been trying to serve it all on one kind of plate and they just need to serve it a different way. Mm -hmm. And if we do that, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are some things you learned, Amanda, with, with your um, daughter when, as far as, you know, different um, approaches that may not be typical? Well, um, things were, could be very overwhelming and um, discouraging. So we needed to do the harder things in the morning and um, had to get, go ahead and get those done. And we did a, you know, I'm trying to think of what they're called. Um, it's like a, a, a uh, exercise ball, but you just sit in it in a chair. It's like a disc. Um, Lots of alerting things. Um, and Lauren, once she got older, she understood that to get through pre-algebra, she was going to have to do some alerting things. So she would get ice water and chew gum and, um, you know, suck on peppermint, um, put a weighted blanket in her lap. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, just that calming um, things that she needed to get through something that was very hard for her brain. Um, good. and that was really nice when she, when you realize that you've been doing things for years and that now they know, um, as a high school student to go and do those things for themselves yes. to, to yes. get it done. They have to do that when they're an adult and they're working a right. job and they have those dresses and they need to know how to appropriately deal with them. And right. My daughter has like a thing that she chews on. Yes. <laughs> She's yes. Like, otherwise, I'm going to chew on my fingernails. So she has this, it's called jewelry, and it's like jewelry right. that she can chew on. And it just, it helps her relieve her stress when she's, you know, right. trying it's to awesome. do something focused. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a quick break um, and hear from our sponsor and because we're already halfway through um, and then we're going to come back and um, and we'll wrap up with um, Amanda and Margie and I'm sure they have a lot more to share with us. But um, if you have any questions also for them um, while we're um, taking a break or after we get, get back started or comments, um, please make sure you put them in the feed. We want to make sure that that's part of our conversation too. So you two can take a, a quick breather here <laughs> and we'll hear from Bookshark. Um, so we thank you Bookshark for sponsoring um, this episode of um, a Sped Homeschool Conversations. And um, Bookshark, if you don't know about them, they are a curriculum company. They um, have a literature based four day faith neutral curriculum and you can find them at bookshark.com, just like on the bottom of the screen there. Um, but Kim McNary, a busy homeschool mom, says that my daughter is on the spectrum as well as has OCD and has instantly taken to this curriculum. It's incredibly structured, which is great for both of us and the kids are awesome too. I'm running my daughter at all kinds of appointments um, and the curriculum fits in amazingly. So Kim is right, Bookshark is fully planned four day um, curriculum that 
flexes with your schedule. Um, and so it has a detailed instructor's guide. Everything's laid out for you, prepared to teach. All you do is open up and even all the materials are included in the kits. So all you just do is open up and go. They got curriculum for ages four to 16. It's available in all subjects or you can purchase it by subject um, if you just want to pick and choose. So it's reading with history, language arts, science, math, and with Bookshark's Literature Rich program, you actually read 35 to 50 engaging books um, a year. And they are either, you can read them, your child can read them, or they can be read. Um, they do have the audio version as well. So you can visit them at bookshark.com to um, download free samples as well as to request a catalog. So thank you, Bookshark. And um, definitely check out their website. But I'm going to bring Margie and Amanda back. And um, so we are talking about strategies to prevent homeschool burnout. And you guys have shared some really good stuff about being flexible, uh, about not um, comparing ourselves to others, about um, just taking it at your child's pace and um, and thinking outside the box. And there's there's just so many things involved with that. I think we as parents, and I've heard this over and over again from from homeschooling parents, I think we, um, we, we put the demands on ourselves that are so high. And I remember thinking, especially with a struggling learner, you know, going to these homeschool conferences, I mean, I've been homeschooling for 18 years, but I would leave crying because all they wanted to tell me was how my child can make it through to college when they're 13. And I'm thinking, you don't be reading by the time he's 13. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. Um, but success looks different for every child. And, um, and I think that's what you've been talking about. And, and even in every homeschool, you know, I, I love Margie that all your children are different. I mean, that probably wasn't the easiest thing for you. Um, well, I actually, in my workshop, I can hear it to a zoo. I really, <laughs> and sometimes I even would answer the phone and say, Margie's zoo, how are you? Because it was a wild thing, but, uh, but we just, each one of us just, now you look back and you realize God was training me, I think, uh, yeah. for all those different um, things, you know. But, you know, so I was talking about homeschool burnout today with a couple of people that came across my path. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that one of the ladies brought up to me was she said, my burnout wasn't always caused by the schooling. It was other oh, things. And it yeah, was the responsibility so of true. keeping the house and keeping you know, because she said, I just get to the point that I thought, I just need to give them away to somebody else so I can have a clean house for a day. I don't know if anybody <laughs> felt that way. You know, um, I think a lot of moms are that way, yes. <laughs> she said, that's why she would send them to a, you know, a class or something because they need something. Um, and, you know, just brought back a lot of memories to me mm -hmm. of the ways that God's why We actually lived out of state from any family. So we had no, like I couldn't call grandma to come over and help. Uh, it wasn't happening. But God managed to supply a lot of grandmas and grandpas for our kids. Um, and so sometimes there's just those people out there in your church or somewhere that they're done raising their kids and they really would love for you to help. Um, I, was, I had, a, there was an older lady lived across the street from us that had, um, had had, I didn't even know it till we got to doing this, that she had raised seven children herself that she had never homeschooled, but she had, them. so she understood. And she finally one day came and she said, look, is there anything I could do to help you? And I said, well, if you could just make these socks, you know, because I have eight people in this house. I cannot keep everybody <laughs> in socks. And she, she would come over once a week and make socks, but she would also listen to a child read a book or mm, talk wow. to them and ask them about what they were doing for school. And um, she passed away about a year ago. And my kids, it was like a grandparent left yeah. the earth because they oh. were attached to this sweet little woman that just came over. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that another gentleman in, in their lives that was a man at our church that his kids were all running. He was a retired engineering professor and he would, mm -hmm. he just wanted to spend time with the kids and he would come over and take them on bike rides and, and do things. Mm -hmm. But he also, our little daughter that struggled reading, he sat every week for an hour or so. He would just help her with her reading and play mm -hmm. games with her. Mm -hmm. It was wonderful for me with having a lot of children, having that extra help. So just look around you. There might be some people that could help with that burnout by being there. You're blessing them and blessing you at the same time. They need right. that, um, that opportunity. Yeah. And uh, I think yeah, the, the, the Lone Ranger mom, uh, homeschooling mom, we can't, we can't, 
portray that anymore. Um, right. you know, I was talking with Steve Demme and he said one of his new conference talks was going to be how to build your team because he said, we can't do this alone. We need to know how to do this. And so that, you know, those were people that were part of your team. Um, Amanda, you, you had talked about therapy too, you know, so that's another way. Um, is there right. other, other ways that you kind of had, you didn't, you know, other ways that you got help with your- I did. Um, I was fortunate um, that my sister-in-law homeschooled my nieces and nephew. So we had um, weekly, uh, we call them co-ops, but they were very laid back co-ops. Uh, there was a lot of fellowshipping with my sister-in-law and I and um, the kids, you know, we did, we did art projects or um, went through, did a history uh, lap book or something, but it was a lot of playing and a lot of us comparing notes and um, decompressing. And that, that was really important. Um, another really important thing of having a struggling learner was um, when we were in a local support group, that was when people met more in person than they do just online. Um, we realized that they're, everyone, they were targeting typical learners. So we started our own struggling learners group. And um, that was so um, helpful to have, again, like-minded um, people that we could encourage one another. One day, I literally just said, uh, I think I posted on um, some platform, if your child struggles with math, uh, could you come over and we can just, you know, brainstorm. And they just came over in the living room and, and we talked about different options. And um, so just really being intentional to find like-minded people um, with some of the same struggles mm -hmm. uh, that I found, we found touch math, which was uh -huh. a phenomenal, a life-saving thing for mm -hmm. um, my daughter with dyscalculia. Um, yeah, I don't know what we've done. Yes. Has really been helpful that, with that. You no. Know, and one thing that's kind of, I'm sorry, I can't hear you again, Peggy. So, oh, okay. but um, my mic. one of the things that triggers what she was saying with that is that we have this whole new phenomenon happening in the homeschool world is that you've got a lot of people like me who have, you've got the second generation homeschooling. And there's, I have a lot of mothers will say, oh my gosh, what if I, you know, and I go, just look around you. There's some other homeschoolers to help. And so there is yes. that, that whole, that whole thing of, of being able to use and, and find people that have walked this road that are around you because there's more and more uh, that are out there and uh, we're not going to run out of homeschoolers. We no. need everybody that's got all that experience to bring it to the table. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and well, now we can connect so well online. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. amazing. That's just open doors. Um, before you had your monthly meetings and um, email. So now there's just a lot more support. Oh, sweetheart. When we started homeschooling, there wasn't even internet or email. <laughs> <I know. laughs> you mailed, you mailed mail. letters by snail mail. And you had phone chains that you called. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was like, I remember I laugh and tell people, I, like, I remember the first time somebody brought a VHS tape to a co-op to play an educational tape. And we thought, is that right? Can we do that? <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, it has come so far. It's just so many opportunities. You know, when we started, everybody said, your kids will never go to college. And so now we look at, we go to conventions and we see all these colleges come and wanting our children to I'm going, this yes, is good. Yes, this is good. Cool. You know? So it's come a long way that the opportunities are just, it's actually yep. kind of pendulum has swing has swung a lot mm -hmm. to where homeschooling really offers more benefits than being in a traditional school because you can really cater to them. Right. And, uh, yeah. And then not, not pigeonholing yourself that support has to look like this. I mean, it was nice to, to listen to both of you and just the, the differences, you know, whether you have family or you don't have family, um, whether your child, you know, is struggling profoundly or not. And um, so there, there are so many options. I know with my kids, we had, I had two other families because I didn't have family nearby, Amanda, but I had like that same fellowship time with these two moms, right. like both kids on the autism spectrum. And our kids actually understood each other as well as their siblings. And so we just had a co-op once a week where we just got together and we hired a teacher maybe to do a class. And then they just had playtime and we, we got to yes. 
So yeah, so important. And and yes, Nancy, the house clean that <laughs> that didn't happen for years in my house. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's home ec. Yeah. Well, you that's know, um, exactly. yeah. <laughs> get the kids involved. Well, that that's true. You know, we had um, I do a workshop called "How to Survive Homeschooling," and it had mm -hmm. didn't have to do with the curriculum, but had to do with doing things like planning a menu. Because every right. day at four or five o'clock, these people are going to show up well, and say, <laughs> "What is for dinner?" <laughs> and you seem to have had some idea because when you homeschool, they do it three times a day. Uh -huh. And you're right. like, oh my God, I gotta feed these people. But then learning to, if you feed them healthy, then they, you have a lot better success too. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, learning how to keep your house clean. And I love that Amanda said you do it together. We would go into a room. We had, we were blessed. We finally got our house all hardwood floors. And I would go in with a broom, a dustpan, a trash can, and a laundry basket. And we would all go together. And we would, I would take the broom and sweep it all in the middle of the floor. And if it was anything that they wanted to not have to sing for <laughs> later, then, then, it, we didn't, then they grabbed it and put it away. Or we put it in the basket. I swept the floor, put the trash in the trash can, and we moved to the next room. We could go through our whole house in pretty short order. And then at the oh, end of the day, we had this basket of stuff that didn't wasn't where it's supposed to be. We would watch a movie. Because we didn't, you know, you have to realize we never had, cable or dish or yes. yeah, so it was exactly. a big deal to, but whatever even if it wasn't that day but whatever day we watched yeah. i would stop the movie i had my own commercial breaks and i called them clutter drills and they had to stop and they had to pick up anything that you know they'd have to run out to okay, everybody has to find five things and they would go put it away and then or they could make get things out of this basket and go put it away we made a game out of a lot of stuff <laughs> but oh, usually awesome. by the end of the night, depending on how much had to be put away, was how many items they had to get every time there was a commercial break. Mm -hmm. um, they, uh, we, by the time we went to bed, everything was back where it needed to be. You know, now sometimes they would only get to the room where it needed to be, but at least right. there, yeah. I got went in that, that bathroom, I could put things back where they belong. Mm -hmm. So it helped mm -hmm. us keep some sanity because you don't learn well and you will get burned out. If there's chaos, chaos around you all the time, yeah. I used to tell yeah. them I need a clean surface mm -hmm. because when we get mm -hmm. clean surfaces, it says pile on me or spill on me. You know, the floors. Yeah. You know, it says, I said we got to have times that 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 you kind of pull everything together. So it is okay mm -hmm. to have an in-service day. You know, at school they had <laughs> in-service day. Yeah, right. You know, exactly. They let the kids clean desk at school. <laughs> you know, at least we did mm -hmm. back in our school. So. You, it's okay to call a day. So we're going to have organizational skill day. We're going to work. We got to get the house back under control because that will, that, that lack of control makes it not a good learning environment, mm -hmm. but it also causes a lot of stress. And uh, that was one of the things my friend reminded me of this afternoon, the how stressed you would get when the house was out of control. And I said, well, you just stop and clean it up because <laughs> it's not going to keep working. Well, that's so. a good point you brought up is chaos. Um, what are some other things as far as chaos in our lives that can lead to burnout? And um, what are some ways that you can combat that? Oh, I must have been really good at this, this chaos because I when was having the kids do so much stuff. Um, my, you know, we were always told, what about socialization? What about socialization? And I reached a point and I said, I want to anti socialize these children. Uh. <laughs> and, I had four in soccer, one coach in, not uh, with ref in soccer, and one getting married, one spring. And my <laughs> husband said, "Nobody's playing soccer this spring." And we were like the soccer family, you know. Mm. And uh, he said, "These kids will live without soccer, but I'm not sure you're going to live with it. You cannot be running <laughs> on these ball fields." That and is he, a good husband who tells you that. Yeah, he listen. never asked me. Yeah. You know, he never drew lines in the sand very often, but when he did, I listened. And it was a great spring. We realized, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. everything calmed down. We weren't running. It was wonderful. We were able to enjoy getting ready for our son's wedding. You know, it was just made life so much better. And uh, we realized that everybody just couldn't be doing everything, or even if it was just one sport. We said, how about pick one or two sports a year? You know, <laughs> you know right. like you had soccer in the fall and soccer in the spring, you know, mm -hmm. you, but you can't be doing two things at once. And so I think it's that that chaos of, of getting your schedules just too full. 
Right. And well, it's leaving any... some margin in your your lives. You know. Yes, definitely. Amanda, is there any like margin well, I... that you kind of carved out? Well, I think that um, giving yourself um, forgiveness or space when um, we did have all of our family together in the same city. So if someone was in the hospital or someone had to go to the nursing home, we fostered um, newborns. So when we would have these unusual circumstances, um, you would start to feel like you're falling behind because you're not doing the typical school day, but giving yourself permission to know that this is still learning. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's learning compassion. It's patience. Um, yeah. It's, you know, newborn care and ministry. Um, mm -hmm. And that and that that was another part. We always felt like we did the year round school to either be catching up or getting ahead, because as you homeschool for years and years, you realize that life is going to happen um, mm -hmm. in your homeschool um, family. And so um, when you stop worrying about um, the checklist and just, again, just life is part of the schooling experience, mm -hmm. um, yeah. that helped a lot with the mom guilt. Mm -hmm. so. We have a lot of people that call that agree. Oh, I haven't done my 180 days. I have got to. And right. I looked and I said, I'm pretty sure as a homeschooler, we homeschool 365 days a year. If their feet hit the floor, they were we were teaching them something. You know, uh -huh. so, and uh, so I always said, just, you know, don't worry about it. You are doing it. It's not everything that just comes out of a book. And I think right. like I said, you can feel burned out because you feel like you're not, you know, meeting all those things. But life is, mm. you know, life is a, um, yeah, you know, the world is your classroom. You know, life right. is literally. so mm -hmm. it's fine, you know. Right. When one thing they talked tell said a lot about socialization when we first started homeschooling. Yes. And I used to always say, Well, what is socialization? Is that like when you're all in the same room with all the same age people? Because I've never worked a job that everybody was my same age. So to me, that's not mm -hmm. getting them ready to be an adult. But if they can rock a baby in the nursery, like you yes. know, or they can push a wheelchair in a nursing home and they can look an adult in the face. Now, to me, that's socialization. Right. Yeah. And so sometimes those expectations, people think, well, I got to get my kids around people their own age. And I thought, well, that's not really the way life plays out. Is it, Amanda? You know, no, definitely yeah. not. <laughs> yeah. you know, so I think it's great. They had, you know, I told my older children, you automatically get a child care credit because you right. just get you your younger children, you know, um, <laughs> So because that was just life. They knew more about we kind of left. Our oldest mm -hmm. daughter never played with dolls. You know, everybody was going, She doesn't care anything about baby dolls. I said, Why should she? She's got the real thing. Right. right. She right. was there when, uh, when our last two children were born. I <laughs> said, so mm -hmm. She was, you know, she just grew up with that, you know. So. Yeah. Um, I think an, another big um, problem that I started out with was um, uh, uh, thinking too much about the future. And um, when my older son or my son was doing chemistry or algebra one and thinking, how am I going to um, teach Lauren these particular subjects and letting tomorrow's problems steal today's joy wow. and um, wow. just forecasting problems. And now they are they're on totally two different paths. Home uh, home life lets us do um, a four year college path, a two year college path or a life path. Mm -hmm. And Matthew, my older one was on the four year college path and my younger one is on the life path. And so she's not doing chemistry um, and the higher maths uh, because that does not fit her goals. And um, so I wasted a lot of time worrying about the future um, when I needed to just focus on, you know, the, the pre-algebra that we were doing today. Um, right. And if you need that curriculum, you know, I would sit and pray about it and whatever my child needed would fall into my lap when I needed it. Amen. That's it right. Would just be there. And if it wasn't meant to be, it wasn't meant to be. I mean, we got to the point with my middle son with high school math and we did logic because algebra just made no sense to him at all. Right. And he even <laughs> said, I'm not going to college, mom. And I said, okay, if you're okay with this transcript, I'm okay with this transcript. Yes. And, um, you know, that's, 
And, you know, we never put our daughter on a college path at all. Our one daughter that struggled, we just thought get her out of high school path was what we were on. We just, <laughs> right. and, and I, I didn't worry about the future, but I just said, as long as, long as we fill in the blanks and get this girl graduated, it's going to be a good day. But when she had made enough permits that her junior year, we, she, I said, well, why don't you just go to this local Bible college and dual enroll a class? Because they were letting you do it. It was just when they were just starting to let you right. do dual enrollment. Yeah. And I said, and then you'll be able to tell people that you have some college, but don't go take English comp or math. Just take something fun. So she went over to theater design and um, uh, sports management. She'd helped start a homeschool volleyball team. She thought they'd be handy. And she got over there and she fell in love with it. And she came home and said, Mama, it's not about how smart you are. It's do you show up for class? Do you know how to do what the teacher's telling you to do? Can you talk respectful to the teacher and go ask for her help if you need it? I mean, she aced out both of those classes and ended up going to college. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have to go to college. I tell people, just check the boxes. If they're meant to go to college, they'll go to college. But she right. uh, said there was kids there that she knew were technically a lot smarter than her. They didn't do as well as her because they didn't have a work ethic. They didn't enjoy learning. They didn't have a good attitude and they, mm -hmm. they didn't succeed. So I've always felt like those were probably the three most important things that my kids walked out of my house with was that good work ethic, that love for learning and, and to do life with a good attitude. You know, I tell my kids, what was the best thing to happen to you yesterday? You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> think about the good stuff. That circles us back to what we kind of started with was that lifelong learner, you know, the, the joy of learning and just really embedding that in your children and, and not getting stressed out about the books and what that should look like and, and everything. So, um, so yeah, definitely. We've got just about seven minutes left. As we finish up, are there anything that, um, that we haven't talked about that you definitely want to make sure to, to get in and, and say to parents? As an encouragement or just some final um just yeah I, I think i think that i'm looking back through my notes i tried to write things down mm -hmm, today and mm -hmm. one of the things that popped out with me was today is you know we tend to be as homeschoolers to be that cross every t and dot every i you know if we're doing workbooks yeah. and good stuff and we can just uh -huh. feel, and um you know they'll even tell you now as i've re researched a lot more they'll say if you do 80 to 85 percent of a curriculum it's considered done because there is so much repeat the next year and and a lot of times if they didn't have enough to fill out the year they just stuck stuff in there that didn't matter you right. know to finish yeah. out and yeah they mm -hmm. do they just finished the student needed extra time even math we, 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 in this back of math questions. books i have yeah. seen stuff and they'll say well you probably never need to know that, that this is just extra kind of stuff you might learn so they mm -hmm. say so parents got to get mine if i get about 80 to 85 percent done mm -hmm. then i'm you know i'm still doing really well i i don't remember ever finishing a book in school so i think yeah. that that sets a lot of parents free too to, to realize that that we're here to to grasp them and, and K through eighth grade, they repeat so much, especially third through eighth grade. When we got to the end of um, mm -hmm. the eighth grade with the last child, I said, I have taught grammar 36 times <laughs> because those six years you teach grammar over and over and over and over. I knew a lot of grammar. I wasn't sure how much the kids knew, but I, I definitely <laughs> learned a lot more grammar. But you just need to realize they just repeat a lot. If they haven't got it by the eighth grade, you might, you know, I, I don't know what you get by high school. They just need a proofreader. Yeah, you know, you just because, use grammar, yeah. pay for the, the subscription. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I use. So, right. Uh, yeah, definitely. What about you, Amanda? Um, the I, I think so. Just um, at being intentional about good um, support and self care. Uh, uh, we as moms are really hard on ourselves and uh, I really stressed with not only being um, the mom, especially of a struggling learner, but also the teacher. And um, I think that we really have to learn to cut ourselves some slack and um, just like Margie said it several times, just about helping them to love learning, helping them to, to know how to learn. Um, because we aren't going to teach them everything that they need to know. They need to, to know how to get information and um, just each day trying to keep the end in mind that you want to finish well. And that that's why I got less and less uh, structure 
to some degree and more laid back as I went on. And I, I really think that that it kind of helped undo all the things that I started out when I was too structured. Um, the kids don't remember that now. They remember getting to sit in my bed and work on the continent song and um, doing read alouds with hot chocolate. That's the pictures that were on Facebook. That's what they they remember and um, just lots of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And that is so true, Amanda. My kids don't even remember very little about textbooks, but they do remember all the field trips and stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you both for taking time to share and I want to thank Home Life Academy for um, for connecting us. Um, I know they they said we, we want to get our consultants on and have them talk about strategies and you guys have had some really good um, good information and so just know that Home Life Academy is there for you. You can find them at homelifeacademy.com um, and um, like Margie said at the beginning and Amanda talked a little bit about what they do. Um, they've We've got people there to help you, to help you figure out how to do this, that'll walk through with you. And they do understand struggling learners. So yes. um, so definitely they're a resource. And they're one of our partner organizations as well. And we appreciate that. And um, so we share a lot of resources between each other. So, um, and we also want to thank Bookshark for sponsoring this episode. Um, and if you want to continue a conversation, we are going to pop off of this video and go right into Mom's Night Out, um, which is on a closed link on our YouTube station, but you can find that link on our um, our website, or if you're part of our Facebook support group, you'll see that um, pop up as well. But the next hour is about you. You can pop on with me just like these ladies, and we're going to chat and um, share our victories for this week, our prayer requests, and all of that. And so, um, so yeah, definitely. And um, Nancy, has one more comment. So my friend who was homeschooled high school and I just started to think about homeschooling, told her, but I'll never be able to teach high school. She said, don't worry, don't, yeah, don't worry where you're not at. And I think that was a good thing what Amanda said is, mm -hmm. you know, one day at a time. Definitely, yeah. Nancy, that's, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. if you're thinking about high school, we have a brand new manual on how to homeschool a struggling learner through high school that was a co collaborative project with some of our other partners, and yeah. we're in the editing process right now. It's already written. Um, it's a 22-chapter manual. It's huge. Um, but I'm excited that that'll be coming out very soon. So. And that's kind of what I do for home life is I do the transition to high school. So oh, get that fear yes. out. And Peggy, I just want to thank mm -hmm. you for allowing us to be yes. with you tonight and oh, get to so do this. Welcome. This was a lot of fun. I hope we get to do it again. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much. Definitely. All right. Well, we'll see you all next week. Oh, and next week we're going to talk about dethroning, dethroning fear and embracing purpose in your homeschool with Ashley Campbell. And so that's our topic next week as we continue this um, homeschool mom burnout. We're trying to avoid that, though. Right. <laughs> so. <laughs> So we'll see Call us then. before you get there. Yes, exactly. <laughs> don't 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 get to that point. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Bye, Thank you. Guys.